Hi everyone, Milan here and I want to talk about blood flow. Probably everyone knows the feeling when you do a heavy set in the gym and you get the really tight feeling in your muscle, which is often called the pump. And many of you are probably familiar with this clip of Arnold where he basically says that it feels like having sex. But what Arnold also says is that you can actually feel the blood rushing through your muscle which is one of the factors that gives this nice tight feeling. But is this blood rush actually useful? Let's start with the beginning. Why is blood flow important? The main function of blood is transport. So blood transports uh, useful stuff towards the muscle, such as nutrients, oxygen, uh, and even hormones. But it also uh, takes away waste products, such as CO2, away from the muscle. The heart pumps the blood around in the body from very large arteries up until very small arteries and eventually very small blood vessels in your muscle that we call capillaries. And these capillaries are located right in between the muscle fibers and that is also where all the exchange of nutrients, oxygen and all that other stuff basically takes place. Having that said, it seems quite obvious that at least some degree of blood flow is just essential for muscle tissue functioning. During exercise, muscle tissue can have a very high metabolic demand, which basically means that it's just using a lot of energy. So because of that, they simply need more energy, they need more substrates, but they also need to get rid of more waste products. To make this happen, your whole cardiovascular system responds. So it increases blood flow in both the very large arteries and the small ones, and even inside of the muscle, so those small capillaries. So when you feel the pump, it is actually blood flowing through your muscle. But again, is this actually useful for muscle growth? Let's have a look at some studies on this topic. A study by Timmerman and colleagues investigated whether changing blood flow can also influence muscle protein synthesis rates. And this is just a process that is underlying muscle adaptation. So in this study, they infused a very high dose of insulin straight in the leg, and that indeed increased blood flow, and it also increased muscle protein synthesis rates. So on the other hand, a second group that also got the insulin infusion got a second substance that is called LNMMA, and that prevents the increase in blood flow. And by preventing this increase in blood flow, also the increase in muscle protein synthesis was prevented. So this study shows that increasing blood flow can also increase muscle protein synthesis rates, but on the other hand, preventing an increase in muscle blood flow also prevents an increase in muscle protein synthesis rates. And this is further supported by a study from Sheffield Moore and colleagues who show that one week of Viagra supplementation can increase muscle protein synthesis rates. So this is interesting because Viagra does not only increase the blood flow in your genitals, it also inc increases blood flow in the rest of your body. However, these studies use a pharmaceutical agent and that effect is much stronger than just day-to-day -day stimuli such as food. Cacao is, for example, a food substance that is known to affect blood flow. And indeed, a study by Phillips and colleagues showed that cacao can uh, stimulate muscle blood flow, but this was not really you know, strong enough to actually increase muscle protein synthesis. And besides this study, there are actually many more examples, and they all show that nutrition can increase blood flow but simply not enough to have a real impact on muscle protein synthesis. So all the studies we discussed so far just look at muscle blood flow in a period of a couple hours. But blood flow is an all-going process. It never stops. Uh, it's just going 24-7. So what if you could increase blood flow over the course of days, weeks, maybe even months? Could that impact muscle growth? So this is actually pretty difficult to answer because we simply cannot measure blood flow 24 seven. However, there are some indirect measures of blood flow that can give us some idea. 
For example, the number of capillaries in your muscle tissue is a pretty good indicator of its capacity for blood flow. So the more capillaries a muscle has, the more blood can flow through it potentially. A study from our lab investigated whether the number of capillaries in muscle tissue is related to how well the muscle responds to resistance exercise training. So indeed, all the participants with a relatively low number of capillaries in the muscle tissue showed almost no muscle growth in 12 weeks of resistance training. On the other hand, all the participants with a relatively high number of capillaries in the muscle tissue showed a pretty good muscle growth response to the training. Although this study does give us some idea of how important capillaries are for muscle growth, it should be noted that it was done in older subjects. And we know from older subjects that they typically have a relatively low number of capillaries in their muscle. On the other hand, young individuals have a much higher number of capillaries in their muscle. But whether the number of capillaries can also be a limiting factor in young people has just not been investigated yet. But there are still some indications that the number of capillaries in young people is also important for muscle adaptation. For example, it has been shown that muscle satellite cells, which are basically the stem cells of the muscle that are important for muscle adaptation, that they get activated much more if you have a higher number of capillaries in the muscle. So can you increase the number of capillaries in your muscle? Well, yes, you can increase the number of capillaries with just being very active uh, and exercising a lot. But if you are already training to optimize muscle growth, then there may not be much more that you can do. So when taking all these studies together, it does seem that blood flow plays an important role in muscle growth. Specifically, a large increase in blood flow can also increase muscle protein synthesis. And in long-term studies, we do see that people with a very low number of capillaries in their muscle also have a lot of trouble gaining muscle mass. But in practice, there is actually not that much you can do to improve blood flow. Only pharmaceutical agents seem to have a large enough effect on blood flow to actually impact muscle protein synthesis. And besides just being very active and exercising a lot, there are not a lot of other tools you can use to yeah, increase the number of capillaries in your muscle. But don't worry, a lot of researchers, including myself, are trying to develop new strategies to improve muscle blood flow. So hopefully in the future, we will have some practical tools. So do you love the pump just as much as Arnold? Then smash the like button.